Hello everyone. <clears throat> Today I decided to show you what happens if you be getting over it with bad body with voice over like before Bennett Foddy stops talking. I already know what happens. I'm just going to show you that. So let's start. Here we go. Feeling more intense than starting over. If you deleted your homework the day before it was due, as I have, or if you left your wallet at home and you have to go back after spending an hour in the city, if you won some money at the casino and you put all your winnings in red so it came up flat, if you got your best shirt dry cleaned before a wedding and then immediately dropped the food on it, if you won an argument with a friend and then later discovered that they just returned to their original condition. Starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, like if you've already had a bad day, then what you're about to go through might be too much. So feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. Alright, thanks for coming with me on this trip. And I'll understand if you have to take a break at any point. Just find a safe place to stop and quit the game. But don't worry, I'll save your progress always, even your mistakes. This game is a homage to a free game that came out in 2002 called Out of Sexy Hype. The author of that game was Jazzle, a mysterious Czech designer who was known at the time as the father of B-games. B-games are rough assemblages of found objects. Designers slap them together very quickly and freely, and they're often too rough and unfriendly to gain much of a following. So far, they're so good. They're built more for the joy of building them than as polished products. In a certain way, Sexy Hiking is the perfect embodiment of a big game. It's built almost entirely out of found and recycled parts, and it's one of the most unusual and unfriendly games of its time. In it, your task is simply to drag yourself up a mountain with a hammer. And that act of climbing, in the digital world or in real life, has certain essential properties that give the game its flavor. No amount of forward progress or gaps, dumb cliffs are too sheer or too slippery. And the player is constantly, unremittingly, in danger of falling and losing your head. Anyway, when you start sexy hiking, you're standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. It might take you an hour to get over that tree. A lot of people never got past it. Prod and poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach and your strength, trying to find a way up and over. And there's a sense of truth in that lack of confidence. Most obstacles in video game worlds are fake. You can be completely confident in your ability to get through them once you have the correct method or the correct equipment or just by spending enough time. In that sense, every pixelated obstacle in sexy hiking is real. The obstacles in sexy hiking are unyielding, and that makes the game uniquely frustrating. But I'm not sure Jazzero intended to make a frustrating game. The frustration is just essential to the act of and it's authentic to the process of building a game about it. A funny thing happened to me as I was building this mountain. I'd have an idea for a new obstacle, and I'd build it, test it, and it would usually turn out to be unreasonably hard. But I couldn't bring myself to make it easier. It already felt like my inability to get past the new obstacle was my fault, as a player rather than as a builder. Imaginary mountains build themselves from our efforts to climb. And it's our repeated attempts to reach the summit that turns those mountains into something real. When you're building a video game world, you're building with ideas. And that can be like working with quick sets of hands. You mold your ideas into a certain shape they can be played with. And in the process of playing with them, they begin to harden and set until they're immutable like rocks. Oh, yeah. And at that point, <clears throat> you can't change the world. Not without that jump is easy. And starting fresh with new ideas. Years now, people have been predicting that games would soon be made out of prefabricated objects, bought in a store, Finally. and assembled into a world. But for the most part, that hasn't happened, because the objects in the stores are trash. I don't mean they look oh, no. bad, or that they're badly made, although a lot of them are. 
I mean, that trash in the way that the I'm still going to Things are made to be consumed and used in a certain context. And once the moment is gone, they transform into garbage. In the context of technology, those moments pass by a second. Over time, we've put more and more refuge into this vast digital landfill that we call the internet. It now vastly outnumbers and outweighs the things that are fresh and untainted and unused. When everything around us is cultural trash, trash becomes the new media, the lingua franca of the internet. And you can build culture out of trash, but only trash culture. B games, B movies, B music, B philosophy. Uh, why did it get so hot all Maybe of a this sudden? This is what digital culture is. A monstrous mountain of trash, an ash heap of creativity's fountain. A landfill yes. with everything we ever thought of in it. Grand, infinite, and unsought. <clears throat> There's 3D models of breakfast, Gen X's fanfic novels, Scan magazines, green screen Shia LaBeouf, banned stuff scenes on live <clears throat> Facebook's got Li-Fi bots with unbranded adverts and candid shots of Kanye and Taylor Swift mashups, car crash epic failed chips, Russian dash cam vids, discussions of McRibs, discarded, forgotten, unrecycled, muddled, rotten, untitled. Everything's fresh for about six seconds, until some newer thing beckons, and we hit refresh, and there's years of persevering, disappearing into the pile, out of style, out of sight. Alright, the hot button is over. In this context, it's tempting to make friendly content that's gentle, that lets you churn through it but not earn it. Why make something demanding if it just gets piled up in the landfill, filed in with the landfill? When games were new, they wanted a lot from you. Daunting, taunting you, resetting, delaying you. Players played stoically. Now everyone's turned off by that. They want to burn through it quickly. A quick fix for the fickle. Some tricks for the clicks of the feckless. <clears throat> but that's not you, you're an acrobat. You could swallow a baseball bat. Now I know, most likely you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, while some dude with 10 million views does it for you, like a baby bird being fed chewed up food. That's culture too. Boys. But on the off chance that you're playing this, what I'm saying is, trash is disposable. But maybe it doesn't have to be your protagonist. What's the feeling like? Are you stressed? I guess you don't hate it if you got this far. Feeling frustrated. It's underrated. An orange. This sweet, juicy fruit locked inside a bitter pill. That's not how I feel about a challenge. I only want the bitterness. It's coffee. It's grapefruit. It's licorice. It feels like we're closer now. Composer and climber, designer and user. Yes, here we you go. You refused, but you didn't. There was something in you that was hidden. <sighs> Listen to carefully. It means a lot to me that you've come this far, endured this much. Every wise crack, every insensitivity, every setback you've forgiven me is a kingly gift that you've given me. We have the same taste, you and I. <laughs> It's not ambition. Do you get it? It's ambition's opposite. Uh, An obdurate mission. To it's like... You'll feel bad if you win. So uh, I put this snake in for you. The ending music and... Yeah, and the original music just get mixed like that. And it sounds like that. It's super weird. I don't know why Ben Five didn't fix that. He should fix that, in my opinion. Okay, I'm going to speak, skip it. And it just ends up like that. Clear time, 9 minutes. 39 wins. <laughs> Alright, that's it. 
see you in the next video.